What's up guys, in today's video we are going to be going over frequently asked questions when it comes to pads. On my last YouTube video that I made, we went over pads, boat detailing pads, we went over wool pads, foam pads, waxing pads, microfiber pads, everything that you need to know about pads is in that video. If you did not watch that video already, go ahead, click right here, watch that video all the way through, and then come back to this one because if you watch this one first, it may leave you kind of confused with some of the answers because I'm not going to go into as much detail as I did in that video. So watch that video first. It is also in the description down below. So guys, if you watch that video and you may have had some questions to yourself about specific things, so what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going through the YouTube comment section and I'm going to answer very specific questions that you guys had and on Instagram, a bunch of you guys blew up my phone and asked very specific questions. So what I did is I probably took 10 of the most frequently asked questions about pads and I'm going to answer them as best as I can in this video for you guys just to clear up some of the things in that video that maybe weren't totally clear or just random questions that you guys may have. Guys, like always, if you get any value out of this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so every time I make a video, it'll pop up. Also, please share these videos on Facebook or with your friends. That would mean the world to me. All of the products that I might list in this video will be in the description down below. You can check those products out, all the pads that we talk about. I will do my best to link them all down below. So if you'd like to purchase those products, you can. All right, guys, first, before we hop into it, I just wanna thank you guys so much. That last video that I did got a ton of likes, of comments. You guys have blown me away. That was obviously a very, very much needed video. What I want you to do in this video, please, is comment down below video ideas. I'm always looking for video ideas. I only wanna make content that you guys actually enjoy. So please comment down below one a question you may have about this video as I'm talking and two Give me some ideas for some videos that you guys would like maybe product review videos Maybe more tutorials whatever you guys would like to see I want to shoot them Please comment down below what you would like to see and also if you obviously have more questions on pads So with all that said, let's go ahead and just hop right into the video I'm gonna try to make this one as short as possible, but you know, I can get long-winded <laughs> anyway guys I'm gonna start from my Instagram account if you do not follow me on Instagram you're missing out I I give a lot of boat detailing advice on Instagram, especially my Instagram stories. It's usually pretty daily. I do a lot of business motivation. So if you are a boat detailing company and you want some motivation, business skills and that kind of thing, go ahead, follow me on Instagram at drakes.detailing. So that's drakes.detailing. I also have a link down below if you'd like to follow me on Instagram. So on my Instagram stories, I asked you guys to write your pad questions and I'm gonna go over some of the ones that I thought were the most relevant. Very first question right off the bat, I had someone write and says, what is your favorite go-to pad when compounding and polishing? A lot of these questions are pretty open-ended questions, guys, because every boat is not the same. I wish they were, but the first thing that pops in my head, whenever it comes to compounding, if I'm compounding a boat, my go-to pad is going to be a wool pad on a rotary with some compound. That's usually gonna be my go-to pad because that is going to cut the most and it's gonna be the most effective or the most efficient way of cutting. There's different styles out there. Like I say in a lot of my videos, I'm not saying this is the only way, this is just the way that I do it. So my, when it comes to any type of compounding across the board, unless it's a brand new boat and it's just minor swirls, but if there's any oxidation, any fading at all, I'm going to jump on a Makita rotary with a buff and shine wool pad and that's going to be my compound. I'm typically gonna use a product called Stark Leather level R for that process to heavy cut compound. And then my next go-to polishing pad is going to be the orange Lake Country force rotation pad on the Flex 3401 VRG with Minzerna 400. So if I had my go-to, it's gonna be a wool pad and the orange Lake Country pad with Minzerna 400. All right guys, so second question is, when is it time to throw the pad away or to keep it and clean it? This is a great question. A lot of you guys ask me this all of the time and it is a valid, valid question. Me personally, I err on the side of replacing pads. I love a fresh plush pad, okay? So if it's a wool pad, I love a nice fluffy fresh pad. And if it's a foam pad, I like a nice crisp foam pad. The longer you use these pads, the more they're either gonna cut less or possibly cut more. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. If you have a wool pad, the more you use it, the less those fibers are gonna grow. So you might have a 1.5 inch wool pad with really long fibers, and the more you use it, the more those fibers are gonna lose its cut, and it's actually going to get smaller and smaller and smaller over time. It's going to lose its fluffiness. 
And when it does that, it's actually going to cut more, okay? Unlike a foam pad, a foam pad is the opposite. The more and more and more you use it, the less it's going to cut. Now, when it comes to a wool pad, I typically like to have a fresh, fluffy wool pad. And a lot of you guys have asked me, you know, hey, when is it time to trash it? I typically would recommend if say you're doing 25, a 25 foot boat or a 50 foot boat, okay? I typically would recommend go about 50 feet per wool pad. Okay, now I know some of you guys are like, whoa, that, you know, I've gone three or four boats with one wool pad and that's fine. You technically can do that, but it will not cut the same. So if a, if a wool pad is fresh and pluff, fluffy and, and all of this good stuff, after you use it after about 50 feet, so if you're doing a 50 foot hole and you go all the way down one side, by the time you do the other side, those fibers are going to be shorter, which means it's going to cut more and it's not going to have the same polishing effect when you go to polish it out after because it is cutting technically a little bit more. There's a lot into it guys, but I typically rec recommend if you have a double sided, you know, fluffy wool pad, go 50 feet with on one side, flip it over and do 50 feet on the other side. And after that, I'm trashing it. So if you do a 50 foot boat and you use a $20 pad, it costs you 20 bucks to do the whole boat. It's not a loss. It's not a ton of money, but it will keep your polishing very, very consistent. Now on a foam pad, it's kind of the opposite. The more you use it, the more the foam is going to break down and the less it's going to cut. When you open up a brand new foam pad, it is very hard, very crisp, very dense. And the longer and longer you longer you use it, those the foam is going to break down and it's gonna become very squishy. Likewise, if you have a used pad and you use it time and time and time again, over the 50 feet, I still believe kind of in that 50 feet mark, even when it comes to a foam pad, after 50 feet, it's no longer going to cut the same because it's nice and squishy. So, where you run into a big problem, hear me out because I've done this multiple, multiple, multiple times in my life, <laughs> okay? You thought, you would think I'd learn on the first try. If you use a old wool pad multiple times, you know, you're going your seventh boat in on a wool pad and the fibers are real skinny, but you're running out, the wool pad is gonna cut more. And if you're using the same foam pad that you've used for 10 boats, that is going to cut less. So guess what you're gonna have? A major problem. Because now your wool pad is cutting more and your foam pad that you're trying to polish with is cutting less and you're gonna have swirls like crazy. So I kind of hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, you know, the wool pad is actually gonna cut deeper and scar more the longer you use it. And the, the foam pad is actually gonna cut less the longer that you use it. So like I said, guys, err on the 50 feet rule, okay? Go 50 feet with one wool pad, flip it over if it's double-sided if it's a single-sided just go ahead and toss it it will cost you a little more but i promise you it's going to keep you it's going to keep your polishing consistent and consistency guys is what you want in this industry as for cleaning it if you want to wash it or if you want to preserve it all i use on my pads is water now i know there's other products you can use you can you can you know throw them in a washing machine you can get a bucket cleaning system all this stuff I don't personally do that. There's nothing wrong with the bucket systems and all that good stuff. I just don't do that. I usually spray them out with water, maybe take a little Dawn dishwashing soap or like degreaser, spray a little super clean uh, in there, scrub it out real good. If it's a foam or a wool pad, scrub it out, work it out real good, just squeeze it out. And then go ahead, stick it on your rotary machine on the Velcro backing plate, stick it on your rotary machine, crank it all the way up to six and let it run. It's gonna sling all that water out and then there you go, you can go right back to work. All right guys, so here's another good question. Someone asked me microfiber or wool when it comes to cutting. I personally always err on the wool side. You can buy DA wool pads now that are actually really good and very efficient or if you want a wool pad on a rotary machine, go that route. I personally do not like microfibers with for correction on boats. Now that could change in a year from now. So in a year from now, if you're watching this, I could be the next microfiber guru guy. But as far as right now, I have not fell in love with the microfiber pads. I feel like they cake up too much uh, when it comes to a boat. Cars is a little different story or even RVs is a little different story. But when it comes to boats, I have not fallen in love with microfiber. So as of right now, I'm gonna stick with either DA wool pads from Lake Country or you can get the buff and shine wool pads on a rotary. All right, guys, so just a few more questions. Uh, this question right here is, do you ever use the Orange Lake Country force rotation pad on the Griots G9? Yes and no. <laughs> you technically can use the Orange force rotation 
on the G9. Now, the Griot's G9 does not have a ton of cutting power. Okay, so if you use a, G a Griot's G9 and you put a lot of pressure on it, it will stop spinning because it is a dual action polisher. It is not a force rotation, so it does not have a ton of torque when you put a lot of pressure on it. So if you're doing any type of polishing, I would 110,000% recommend getting the Flex 3401 VRG or the Rupes Milli. That is going to change your life if you're doing polishing. If you've been doing any type of polishing with the Griot's G9 on a boat, you might be pretty good at it, but I guarantee it is nothing compared to the Flex or the Rupes Milli. Get you a force rotation if you want to have efficient polishing. Now, technically, you can use the orange pad on the Griot's G9. I would technically recommend you get the SDO pad. It is technically a polishing pad for a dual action. It's a little thinner and it'll keep it spinning, but I do not like to do much of any polishing with the G9. It just simply does not have enough power to get the job done. With the G9, I usually like to just wax and sand, and that's pretty much it. So this is a really good question. It says, curious to compare the finishes from different brands with the same coarseness or color pads. Um, this is a very good point, and I briefly touched on it in the other video. But guys, every manufacturer does cut different. So if a Lake Country medium cut pad may cut differently than a Meguiar's medium cut pad or a Chemical Guys pad or a Buff and Shine medium cut foam pad. Just because it's medium cut does not mean it's gonna cut the exact same. Now, because it is technically a medium cut, it will usually cut around the same. I have not come across any pads that, you know, it says medium cut and you put it on there and it basically sands the boat. I have not come across that. If you notice, I don't use Lake Country wool pads. I use Buff and Shine wool pads with Lake Country foam pads. What I have done is I've had my system for years and I've basically know it. I perfected it. I know, you know, what speeds, what pressure and that sort of thing you use. So if you're using different pads than Lake Country or Buff and Shine, it's just something you are going to have to learn. It can, it is flexible. I'm not saying my system is the only way. I'm, this is just the way that I do it. So when it comes to other pads with medium cuts, light cuts, they typically will cut around the same, but you can always bank that they will cut differently. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, different densities in foam, different types of foam will cut differently as well. My recommendation to you is stick with the brand, stick with the style, and perfect it. Don't try all these different stuff. Just do what I'm saying, guys. Please, just get the get the Buff and Shine Wool Pad 1.5, get the orange uh, force rotation pad with the Flex 3401 VRG, and I promise you, you will thank me later. Ditch all the other pads and get Lake Country. Lake Country does not sponsor me in any way. They are not paying me a penny to say this. I'm just telling you, I've used a lot of other pads. I use a lot of other foam pads. Um, Lake Country is by far the best in my opinion. All right, so that was some Instagram questions. I'm gonna hop to YouTube. We have one right here. It says, can you use the foam pad on a rotary or should you only use them on a DA? What are the pros and cons? Yes, you can use foam pads on rotaries. There's plenty of other people out there that get great results with foam pads on rotaries. Now, I personally do not because typically, even if you have a foam pad on a rotary, you may get most of your swirl marks out, but you are most likely gonna still leave holograms, okay? Holograms are usually caused by the rotary. Now, it is possible to get a perfect finish with a rotary. If you can get a perfect finish with a rotary, one, it takes a decent amount of skill to do that, and the brilliancy of the finish is amazing. It's untouched, but you have to usually do multiple steps and you have to have some really, really, really good patience and skill to make that happen. You can typically cut that time in half if you just jump on a Flex 3401 VRG to do your polishing. So, do I personally ever use a foam pad on a rotary? Absolutely not. I just simply don't. It can, however, be done. I just simply do not do it. So what I typically recommend is use a wool pad for your compounding on a rotary, then hop to a Flex 3401 VRG or a Rupes Milli to do your polishing with foam pads and then go ahead and wax it, call it a day. Okay, next one from YouTube, which I thought was good. And I, you know, sometimes I think stuff is common sense and it's not always. So the question is, can you use the five inch pad on the Flex 3401 VRG with the standard stock 
backing plate? And the question is no. Okay, so when you order a Flex 341 VRG, you know, from you know from our website or wherever you get a Flex 341 VRG, it's gonna come with a six inch backing plate, and you cannot put the five inch on the six inch because the diameter of it will, um, you know, it'll, it, it's obviously bigger than the five inch plate. So what you have to do is get the five inch backing plate. So if you want to use five inch pads, which I usually do, I love the five inch pads, especially on top sides of boats or inside center consoles, you do have to get a five inch backing plate. Um, however, you can get six inch pads for the six inch backing plate. Okay, so the next question is, is do you have a break in process for a wool pad so you do not get fuzz everywhere? <laughs> okay, so, if you have bought a buff and shine wool pad, you take it out the pad, you put it on your machine, you're ready to go. The first thing you're gonna notice for the next six minutes as you're buffing is wool is gonna fly freaking everywhere. <laughs> it does suck and unfortunately that is the downside of buff and shine. Their pads shed like crazy in that first five minutes. Unfortunately, there's really not much you can do to prevent that. Now, one thing you can do is take about 30 seconds to a minute and clean it out with a spur. So if you put your machine on your knee, you know, you take your spur and run it through like you would clean it like normal. That's going to let all that lint and stuff fly out. But still, typically, it usually takes about five minutes for all that fuzz to stop flying everywhere. So if you put a fresh pad on, just go ahead and expect that, that fuzz is just going to fly everywhere. That's just the loose fibers and the wool shedding. It's not necessarily a problem. It's just kind of a pain you know, to have wool everywhere and up your nose and around your face and all that kind of stuff. So if you do have a break in process for wool pad, it's typically just going to be cleaning it with a spur. Okay, guys, this is going to be kind of my last and final question um, that you guys have wrote. So it says, Hey, Drake, thank you for the video. Will you please answer? How do you match up the pad and different machines for different situations? So what I'm going to interpret that as is, Hey, you come to a boat, how do you know which pad and which machine to use on the boat? Now, this is gonna go into a test spot video that I'm dying to make for you guys and I just not ha have had really the opportunity to make for you guys on how to determine what steps need to be taken. But guys, typically what I do is I walk up to a boat. So let's say it's a 25 foot center console. I will walk up to that 25 foot center console and usually with that with years of just knowledge and you know, I've been doing this for a long time, I typically know what it needs to, what needs to be done. So a rule of thumb across the board is if it's chalky at all. So if you take your hand and you rub it on it and you get like a white film or a white powder on your hand, if that ever happens, that is a 100% wet sand job. Don't even try to buff it, okay? Because if you try to buff it, it just simply won't cut deep enough and it's going to look really cloudy and splotchy and it's just not going to look good. So rule of thumb across the board, if it's ever chalky, that is a 100% sanding job. Now that is up to you to determine how many sanding steps and what grits and all that. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna stick to the pad. So if it's chalky, sand, if you get to a boat and it's evenly dull, so it's evenly nice and dull, it's not chalky, but it's evenly dull, I am 99% of the time gonna hop straight to a super heavy cut on the wool pad with the rotary, okay? Like I said earlier in the video, anytime I wanna do any type of heavy cut compound, I'm going to use the rotary with the wool pad. I'm typically gonna use a product called Stark Level R, and that's gonna blow through that oxidation, and then I'm going to follow up with the Flex 3401 VRG with the orange pad, which I already kinda of went over. The way I kind of determine is I have a set system, guys. If you watched my video, for any time you notice that I typically use the same pads I typically use the same machines I typically use the same compounds now it will change a little bit but nine out of ten I'm gonna compound I'm gonna polish and I'm gonna wax using the exact same stuff and I do that on purpose I don't do that because you know it's just what's handy or whatever I do that because I have developed a system and that's what I want you guys to do okay take my information do exactly what I say make a system that works for you and achieves the results that you want. I personally don't have 45 different foam pads. I don't have 10 different wool pads. I have one set of wool pads. I have gray Lake Country pads. I have orange Lake Country pads. I have white Lake Country pads and that's it. I don't have all these different brands. I don't have all these different colors. I don't have all these moving parts. I keep it very simple because it cuts out a lot of guesswork. If you have a system and you know which works, it's going to cut out a lot of frustration for you in the long run and it's going to produce the results every single time so what i typically do is i never have a problem figuring out what pad i'm going to use typically because i know if it's oxidized i'm going to use a wool pad on a makita with stark level r typically and then i'm going to polish it out with minzerna 400 or stark elevate 
with the orange Lake Country pad on the Flex 3401 VRG. That's kind of my go-to every single time. I don't have to sit there and guess which pads, you know, what, what this, what this, what compound, what this. I just have a system and it typically works every single time. So I could technically answer that question, but I, I just did with the fact of, I don't really have a lot of guesswork. If the boat is just slightly oxidized, you know, if it has like practically no fading, it just needs a little a little shine, a little, a little pop, go ahead and just use the Lake Country orange force rotation pad on the Flex 341 VRG with Minzerna 400. And that is gonna give you a brilliant shine, remove swirls. If it's oxidized, go ahead and use the Stark Level R with the wool pad. If it's chalky, you're gonna have to sand it and then do those steps in reverse. I hope that kind of answered that question a little bit. I know I didn't answer it directly, but go ahead, develop a system or copy mine I don't really care. So that is it for today's video. I just wanted to power through some of these questions and answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me time and time and time and time and time and time again. So I hope I did that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification, and please share these videos on Facebook and with your detailing friends. And I will see you guys on my next video. Let's go.